What's going on, guys? We're bringing you guys the seven types of players you see in competitive Fortnite. You know, mindless players, passive ones, and the ones we all fear going up against. Either way, these play styles are not few in between, all right? I'll also be sprinkling in some tips and tricks of how you can deal with some of the more annoying types on this list. Yeah, there are annoying types. And when the video is done, I want you guys to leave a comment saying like which type of player best describes you. You know, we love to see which ones are most common amongst everybody. Even though this channel has tips and tricks, you can find even more over at ProGuys.com. Our courses are structured to guarantee improvement as you progress through them. Plus, you can spend time with our professional coaches who tell you, you know, what you're doing wrong and, and what you're missing and the exact things you need to work on. So drop a like and subscribe and then get started. Follow the link in the description or visit ProGuys.com. What's going on, guys? It's your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm back. Just want to inspire you guys to be great in this game, you know, and also in life. I want to tell you guys this. Stop doubting yourself. You know, believe in yourself. And I want you to step out. You know, just just stop being hesitant with the things that, you know, you want to do. The things that, you know, you have a desire to do. Don't fear. Just go for it. I want you to connect with me on my new Insta at Your Motivation Guy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy. Come on, say it with me. It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. First up. The Placement Warriors, aka the type of player that lands on the edge of the map and plays really passively so they can earn some easy placement points. All right, let me just say this, all right? These guys are a blessing. We love you. I love you. I really do. You know, they actually care about reaching the end game. So for the most part, when they spot you, they leave you alone. And hey, I believe that's like what we all want. So I'd rather someone sees my location and not lay in some rifle shots. You feel me? And if you're feeling a bit aggressive, these guys are usually pretty simple to kill. <laughs> they really are. It's great. They don't have a lot of fighting experience since they're always landing in remote areas and avoid nearly everyone they see. So when the time comes, they panic and either mess up mechanically or just crumble under pressure. The good news is, is that, you know, you don't need to do anything special to counter these players. They sort of just leave you alone for the most part. Yeah, you won't even have to worry about them contesting you off spawn since they're always landing somewhere by themselves. Honestly, if you're looking to improve and this playstyle describes you, do yourself a favor and just change it up. You know, you could just start playing aggressively in arena. Your points might go down, but your skill level is going to skyrocket, guys. That's how a lot of pros use arena as a place to push for kills and improve at the game. You know, you don't have to play recklessly, right? But don't avoid fights. You know, you just think you can just win for the prospect of placement points. You know, in the end, your rank might temporarily decrease, but your skill, hmm, well, that remains and only gets higher. Next, it's the W Keyers. These guys are super aggressive, straight up maniacs at the game. How hostile they can be depend on how crazy the player is, because they can range from playing it smart and only pushing when they have a decent kit to rushing nearby enemies off spawn as soon as they find a pistol. Either way, these guys are pesky and they are really tough to deal with. Usually, you know, you can find these guys at the start of the match. W Keyers love to play aggressively here as they can gamble off you having lousy loot. Plus, they know they can catch those not expecting, you know, and catch them off guard and rely on that surprise factor to win the fight. But what can you do? Good question. How do you counter these hyper aggressive players? Don't worry, I got a few things I can I can help with. An excellent position is one of them, okay? Preferably somewhere that doesn't give you away, but ideally also a spot that also gives you guys the high ground advantage. That way, you can be on the lookout for these thirsty players and really lay in some damage if they try to push you. Applying pressure is a must, my friends. It's a must. You can just sit in your box and just wait for them to walk up, because they are, because they really want to get their kill. And if you let them reach your one by one without dealing any damage, you're essentially handing them the fight. Don't want to do that. But if you do find yourself with an enemy knocking on your door, quick edit plays are the best bet. Trying to time it out, you know, so that you can just catch them with their pickaxe out so they can't retaliate is the best. Or, you know, go for a trap play even. We go into depths with these tips and more in our videos. So, you know, on how to take down W keyers, you know, and make them look like bots. Check it out when you get a chance. All right. All right, guys, at spot number three, we've got griefers. You know, you might have heard your favorite streamer or pro player spotting off this term. But what exactly is griefing mean? It can depend on the context, but essentially griefing is when one party contests another with no regard for their own survival. Yeah. 
You know, it's a pretty broad term that has a lot of meanings, but let's just go through an example of one real quick. All right, so let's just say you're queued into a match, right? You start flying into your favorite landing spot, all is well, and there's just only one guy even remotely close to you, right? But instead of them picking their own landing spot, they just follow you. Wow. Even though landing with someone else makes it way harder to win the game, they don't even care. They just say, screw it, <laughs> whatever, and they put a target on your head. You know, at least with W keyers, those guys will still try to win the game. You know, they won't push you if there isn't some sort of favorable start, like initiating with some shots or just gambling on a better inventory. You know, griefers, on the other hand, oh my goodness, they could be completely out of their mind, man. They're really just short-sighted and usually have some malicious intent behind their decisions, right? You know, you hear about it all the time in the pro scene. Just because a player has a lot of clout, they're going to continuously get contested at their drop location. You know, that or if they can't play for money, they're just going to stop caring and just try to mess with other teams. You know, it's just really dumb gameplay, to be honest, but there's just not much that can be done about it, to be honest. Just know your landing spot down to a T, guys. And in most situations, they're going to end up being a free 50 pot. So, hey, you know, they're not all that bad after all. All right, guys. So at number four, it's storm fighters. You know, whenever you've got the storm approaching or already on you, these guys, for some reason, they just love to start fights. Even though fighting outside of the zone is just horrible for everybody, I mean, who likes fighting when you're taking a tick of damage every single second? You know, it just usually leads to absolute disaster for everybody. Some players call this a form of griefing, which it totally can be. Although we think most cases are due to players not understanding the consequences, maybe it's just not all ill intent. Why shouldn't you take storm fights? Short answer, because you're probably going to be ruining your game. Long answer, well, because you're going to end up using resources like your materials and healing items. Then, if you win the fight, you probably still got a long way to run, meaning you probably still lost. You'll have to worry about gathering more resources and finding a way to heal up before the next zone comes, and that's even if you even reach it. You know, you're probably going to see most storm fights happen at lower ratings in arena, but hey, even in the pro scene, they happen sometimes. To avoid storm fights, the number one tip is to rotate early. For the first and second zones, players tend to make the rotations at the very last minute. But if you go a bit earlier, you can avoid running into these adjacent enemies. And even if you're not maxed on materials or loot, it can still be worth just to leave a bit early. So don't fall into the trap of thinking, you know, you need full mats just to exit your landing spot. You can always fill up in the next zone. And if you can't rotate early, think about how players will rotate out of nearby zones. Each POI will likely have at least one player leaving at the last second. If you can envision their likely rotation path, you can avoid it and just reduce your chances of encountering them. You know, preferably, you know, you should rotate out early, but if you can't, avoid enemy rotation paths, guys. There is, however, one more strategy you can use to prevent storm fights. You wanna know? Here we go. That strat is signaling. That's our next type of player, signalers. You know, you've probably seen the tactic explode in the last few months with players swinging their pickaxes midair to say, hey, bro, I'm friendly. I come in peace. Don't fight me. Let's just rotate safely instead. You know, at first glance, it just seems like, you know, some type of teaming thing people are trying to do and, and some argue it shouldn't be allowed. But I think that most of us have realized it by now that it's just smart to play like that. You know, storm fighting can be dangerous, especially in this meta with no mobility. So players would prefer to let off nonverbal signals to create temporary truces, you know, with one another, be besties, <laughs> you know, so we can head on over into the next zone. But, you know, it's not like you're not doing it to help the other player. It's purely in your own interest, right? Which is why it's just hard to argue it's collusion in any way. If you don't know what collusion is, look it up. Thank you. You know, in a battle royale game where survival is the goal, no player should be forced to fight because sometimes fighting can be very detrimental, especially during the end game. You know, we're making it to the safe zone is just really critical. Countless pros have been letting off these signals for seasons now. In recent seasons, it's only been picking up more steam. So the next time you have a bad zone, all right, and you don't want to fight and you see another player signal with your pickaxe. You know, just let off a swing to let them know that you're friendly. Whether it's during a long early game trek or an unlucky in-game zone, you know, not everyone is going to comply, especially those mean storm fighters that we just talked about. You know, those guys that just want to bully you. But most players, yo, they're looking to win. So let off your own swing and they'll leave you alone. A much better outcome than just battling in the storm, trust me. Next, it's the controller scrimmer. Who knows these guys? You know those times when you're minding your own business, maybe rotating to the next zone or just trying to fill up on some loot, when suddenly you get an absolute beam shot for all your health. Yeah, I'm talking about those moments are just so much fun. I love those moments. 
You won't even be able to put down a wall in time. They'll just hit you with every single shot. And I know it's not nice to generalize, but if I had to put my money on it, i say players with that kind of miraculous aim are probably on a controller. And they aren't your average player, all right? No, 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 no. Controller scrimmers play on PCs, not consoles, all right? But they don't bother with keyboard and mouse. They just prefer controllers. Partly for that Unreal Aim Assist. Look, guys, you know, I get it. You know, controller has its downsides, but, you know, we've been seeing more and more controller pros absolutely dominating this season, probably because of the new Aim Assist's ridiculous strength. And with mixed input lobbies, you just never know. You know, you just don't know if your opponent's on controller or not. Which sucks because sometimes you're going to go for a trade and you don't even know what you're dealing with. You can win versus a keyboard and mouse player, but then you just end up triple or squad dinked in the head before you realize what's happening. Okay, so if you were to know if they were on controller beforehand, you would probably play it differently, right? You wouldn't take no 50-50 fights and utilize builds more, you know, stuff like that. But since there's just no way to know, countering controller scrimmers is next to impossible. You know, it's even gotten to the point where top controller pros are calling it for it to get nerfed. And I kind of agree with them. You know, aim assist does need a nerf, at least for PC players. It just seems to be completely fine on consoles. It's just that, you know, when you have the advantages that a 2000 PC also provides, things start to get a little overboard. You know, I don't know everybody, you know, so it's difficult assessing whether aim assist is truly broken or not. You know, I just know a lot of guys that are on controller and some of you aren't, but you know, whatever side you want, yo, let us know your thoughts. Finally, the last type of player that you're going to see in comp Fortnite, yo, the pros. I'm talking about famous players you recognize, guys, like someone that played in the World Cup or like a top streamer known for their high-end gameplay. You'll probably first see them in the kill feed because, you know, they're going around killing everything that moves. Chances are you're not even going to face them. <laughs> But if you do, say a prayer beforehand, all right, because that's your only hope, because you're going to get rolled in a way that you've never expected. And if you do die to them, you can't even be mad about it. You know, they're pros. Of course, they can just whoop on us anytime they want. It's just cool enough to have the opportunity to fight them. But somehow, if you do manage to kill a pro, it's the best feeling in the world, right? Just knowing that you're skilled enough to deal with the, some of the best players in the world is fantastic. Even if it's a fluke or just a lucky third party, being able just to tell your friends, I killed so-and-so, you gotta believe me. You know, it's just a pretty awesome feeling in the moment, although no one's gonna believe you. So guys, let me tell you this. Which type of player are you? The placement warrior that plays survival and goes for the easy points? Hmm. The W keyer that pushes relentlessly for kills. The griefer that just there to have fun and mess with people. Hmm. The storm fighter that takes fights when they really shouldn't. The signaler that plays it smart by avoiding conflict at bad times. The controller scrimmer that can out damage mouse and keyboard players any day. Or are you the pro? Well, that's probably not you, but hey, you never know. So tell us in the comments, guys. You know, we just really want to know if this accurately describes you. Let us know. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only, say it with me, Keith Allen. Just encourage you guys to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. Keep going, don't quit, don't surrender. All right, you gotta keep going, keep your head up, keep moving forward, all right? Connect with me on my new Insta at your motivation guy. Other than all that, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, help us out by dropping a like. Sub to the channel and ring that bell to get notified for our upcoming daily videos. You can further support the team by using code PROGUYS in the item shop where every purchase helps us out. See you later.